You are listening to the Kinetic Man Podcast. I'm Stuart. And I'm David. And we want to walk with you on the journey to living a life defined by uncommon action that is full of purpose, adventure, and meaningful relationships. Our goal is to refine our why while helping you find yours and together achieve our best and highest purpose. In the end, we'll drive each other to leave the potential life behind and become kinetic men. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Stu. And before we start this episode, um, you probably know that we don't really do any type of paid for advertising on this podcast, but I do have a request. If you have been a listener of this show for a while and you enjoy these episodes and you get value out of it, could you tell somebody? Tell somebody else that you uh, think would would enjoy the show as well and get value out of these episodes and maybe even do a screenshot and post uh, an episode that you've enjoyed uh, on your social media platform of choice and tag us. Uh, we'd greatly appreciate that. Um, the more people know about this, you know, the more listeners we have, the more we can continue to just uh, provide value to you and our listeners and bring in amazing guests uh, and just have really, really cool conversations. So thanks again. Uh, tell somebody about the podcast. Now go enjoy the show. See you. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Right, what up, boys? What up, Eric? Super excited about the conversation today. Um, you know, one thing that I am going to have to be very conscious of is not diving into this is not a fly fishing podcast mm. uh episode. And and so this is uh this is gonna be challenging for me because Eric is an amazing human being, took us some sweet uh fly fishing water. We share some uh, really cool passions and and I'm super stoked about July coming to to uh to fly fish with you. Uh yeah, it's hey, gonna be a blast. I, you said something and I have to, um, I have to question, you know, most people out here, all of us are transplants. One thing I can never get on board with, and maybe, and I'm just curious if this kicks me out of Colorado or not. Like I cannot, uh, abide by the Spanish words, the altering of the Spanish words, uh, Buena Vista will always be Buena Vista to me. Is that okay? Well, uh, only if you want to be clearly identified as a transplant. As a transplant, <laughs> you or know? somebody who's or somebody who speaks Spanish. That too. No, no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you guys? Are you guys? Do you guys know Dude Dad up in Fort Collins? Dude, I, we just, I just went to his the, show on Friday night. We just went to his show. Okay, have you seen his blood on that he just did <laughs> yes. on all the word like all the changing of the names like Canyon City and like you know yeah yes, it was awesome. It's, it's so good. The, uh, your, um, uh, uh, you know, welcome, welcome to Colorado. Here's your, you know, here's your information and, uh, and here's then the chapstick. signing of vehicles, here's your chapstick, here's your chapstick and, <laughs> oh, here's another one. Cause you've already lost that one. Yes. Uh, no, it's so good. So do you yeah. guys say, is it Colorado or Colorado? Mm. So that's, 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 that's a tough one. I say Colorado. That's Colorado. Colorado. I don't have that. I do as much, uh, but but I'm also down in the springs, and so I think it's more appropriate yeah. down there. So yeah, he he put go. a caveat out there. He's like, just call it the springs because yeah. that one doesn't. And matter. that's exactly yeah. what we call it. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I, I just uh, can't get on with the Buena Vista or whatever the the. And I, I even did research. No, so here's I, I here, here's how you fix it. Just call it BV. Understand. Just call it BV. I'm, I'm gonna call it BV. I'm gonna call and it. And now BV. now now you're now now you're like really in there. I was really there this local. weekend, so. Yeah, that's good. That's good. The the uh, the appropriation by the German lady who named Buena Vista, Buena Vista, or whatever she did. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> but that's not what we're here to talk about either. Eric, what's up, man? Super glad to have you on the show. Uh, we met you through, so we have a good buddy, Dave McKinney, who was a Naval Academy connection for us, friend for a long time, aviator pilot buddy for, of Stu. And uh, we, we got it. We, we were exposed to NCF, which we'll talk about through him who went to work in the Florida office. And recently we were like, Hey man, like we're living in Colorado, like Colorado's our spot. We love it here. This is where we're planting our roots. Um, is an NCF of Colorado very quickly. We're introduced to you and uh, it's, it's history from there. It's been, been amazing. We've been able to spend some time with you and, uh, and just super excited about this conversation. So if you don't mind, give us a background who Eric most is and what are you doing? Yeah. Um, well, again, guys, it's it's my joy to be here, and so thank you for for having me on. Um, who who is Eric Most? Um, uh, I'm a father of um, two amazing boys. Uh, I've got a Hudson is 11, Elijah is is eight. Both of our boys joined our family by adoption. Um, so, father of two boys, husband for Jackie, um, my or husband to Jackie, my wife. Um, we have been married now 14 years. Um, we met in. Uh, in Tampa, Florida, where I'm from originally. And um, 
um, my my past. I'm a I'm a business owner. I'm a real estate investor um, who've made a, a bunch of kind of mistakes along the way. Um, I've had a a heart and a passion for uh, generosity, the gospel, and missions, and because of that. Um, a, f- a friend of mine actually in, in Florida in the Tampa office knew that, that they were looking for a president for the National Christian Foundation in, in the Rockies and, um, and said to me, hey, Eric, you and your wife have a heart of generosity, the gospel missions, but you made a ton of giving mistakes um, and you love Colorado. Why don't you move out there and tell other people not to make your same mistakes? And so um, I'm a, a transplant to this area, moved out here in 2018. We had purchased a house here in 15 and uh, or 16 and and moved here though in 2018, and and really feel like God made me to to live in the Rockies. Um, we are a, a family that just adores the uh, God's creation, the outdoors. We spend a lot of time, um, as much time as we can, outside in various um, uh, uh, you know, seasons and places. And so we uh, were in the in the summertime, we're rafters and hikers. In the wintertime, we're snowboarders and skiers and backcountry um, snowboarders. Uh, also known as split boarding for those who are not familiar with it. Uh, we love to fish. We love to, you know, we love to be in the mountains, rock climbing, canyoneering. It doesn't matter. So uh, love to, to leverage the location that God has placed us. That's super um, cool. Yeah. You guys wanted to know a little bit about NCF. NCF, uh, um, NCF is, uh, stands for the National Christian Foundation. And we are the, the largest Christian donor advised fund platform um, or sponsor. And what that is, is a lot of, a lot of people don't know what has, have heard about that, but what a donor advised fund is, is we talk about like a giving fund or like a charitable checking account. And you get the charitable benefit when you make contributions into that, that, that checking account, that, that donor advised fund. And then you're able to grant to organizations that you know and love. And so NCF um, uh, been around for about 42 uh, years have granted out givers through NCF, so we're just a conduit of generosity. We just we just mobilize resources. We we try to we make giving more efficient. Um, givers through NCF have given away almost twenty billion dollars in our history. Um, last year alone, givers on a national basis gave a little over three point two billion dollars into NCF and granted out two point two billion dollars to thirty four thousand different nonprofits. And um, you know, NCF's mission vision. It's why I'm here. Um, if it was for a different purpose, I would not be here, but NCF's mission and vision is, is we long to see each person reach and restored by the love of Christ. Um, and we do that by mobilizing resources and inspiring biblical generosity. And, uh, it's, it's my extreme joy to be a part of that group doing those things. That's so cool, man. And I remember you had mentioned to us, uh, when I was catching more fish than you guys, uh, mm-hmm. fly fishing a couple, couple uh, weeks ago. <laughs> can you, can what? you, can you describe how, how, how that looked for you to catch more fish? Well, and... that's a different story. No, we, no, no, we can no, save that for like, another look, podcast. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe we can tie some photos to this podcast <laughs> yes. episode when we release it. No proof. Or video There's no, no proof <laughs> of of that happening just just so a word just, of some let's, let's just move on let's just move on. let's move on you're yeah, right yeah. We, this is not about fly fishing or you that's that's, right. that's correct that's right. we remember you said that we're not gonna talk about fly fishing today i didn't <laughs> say that i just said it's not a fly fishing focused podcast oh, but, right, but right, you right. took us there so it's but please continue with your your no, was, very was... highly biased framed question Hey, it's biased towards Eric because Eric has said something about um the ncf rockies organization is one of the highest um, mm-hmm. NCF offices with the, the amount of giving that's, that's being done, which is mm-hmm. interesting to me because I wouldn't have thought that mm-hmm. um, out of all the NCF offices. Offices, yeah. So there are actually other offices that have probably have done more. So I, I think the specific thing I talked about was actually in impact investing, and so okay. impact yeah. investing is another like, what do you do with the funds once you've given them into mm. a DEF? So effectively, to get the charitable deduction, you give those that that money away. That then sets in sets sits in that donor advised fund or that charitable checking account. And while it's sitting, what are you doing with those funds? Well, um, the Rocky Mountain office, we have more people that are using those funds to make investments in organizations that have like a triple bottom line. 
Mm. And so they have a they're, they're, they have a, a financial impact, a social impact, and then also a spiritual impact. And so our office um, has been um, the heaviest utilizer of impact investing across the country. There are other offices that have, that have done um, even more granting than NCF. Um, we're a little over 12 years old, and we've seen almost a half a billion dollars flow out of NCF. Um, and so um, I'm, I'm really passionate um, uh, about encouraging folks to think about how are we stewarding all of our capital, not just our charitable capital. And then even with that charitable capital, how are we utilizing that to make impacts? Because a lot of times... Um, a lot of where some of NCF's like greatest benefits that we can bring is that people at large liquidity events. So the mm-hmm. sale of a business, the sale of a, um, of a, of a real estate project, um, you can, there are things that you can do to make a huge, huge impact. Well, that can be a watershed opportunity and that could, that could represent multiple years of charitable giving. And so while those funds are kind of sitting, wait, waiting to be deployed over those multiple years, what are you doing with those, right? You think about the parable of the talents, right? Like we have, have all been entrusted with much. And what are we doing with them? Are we just sitting it and just leaving in 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 a in a bank account? Um, or are we are we making uh, are we taking risk for God's glory for the impact of folks? And so that's that's what I think we were talking about um, the stat about the kind of the most activation here in the Rockies. So can you can you explain that a little bit more in detail, like the the impact investing and give maybe give some examples of what you've seen uh, in your office? Absolutely. Um, I'm really kind of bullish about uh, impact investing. So again, um, you get um, all of our all of our investments make an impact. Let's just be clear. Every single investment we make, both charitably and with personal capital, with um, investment capital from other investors, we are making an impact. Now, the question is, is was what type of impact are we making and what are we targeting? Um, many of your listeners might have heard of things of uh, like um, screening. And so we're going to screen out bad actors, right? So a lot of um, folks might have heard of like biblical responsible investing. So we're going to make an investments that, that are in, in, through BRI, biblical responsible investing. Most often they're screening out bad things. They're going to say, hey, we're not going to allow the investments in the portfolio to invest in pornography or um, or or alcohol or drugs or different things like that, right? Or gambling, um, and and so it's a negative screen. Well, I think impact investing isn't just this negative screen. It's like no, no, no. I want I want to deploy my capital to make an impact. And in the kind of the terms of uh, impact investing that NCF thinks of is, is like what type of kingdom impact is being made, and that and and there could be different different definitions for that. Just to be clear, this is not just a how many people have raised their hand to accept Christ, right? Um, and so there's a there's a lot of different opportunities to invest in organizations that are making an impact, especially when you have business owners that see their business, not just as a business for um, the sake of, of earning a paycheck, right? But it's that, that I see my business as a, as a, as a place of, of, of ministry. I see my business as a place to impact people's lives. And so impact investing can come into place there. And so um, a wide variety of kind of opportunities. And so let me give you just a couple different, like I name a couple, I'm not representing them specifically or things like that, but um, uh, I think this can give an examples of how people can think about this. First is kind of a pooled um, impact investment opportunities. And so there are organizations that right now today access by accessible to anybody. You don't have to be a qualified um, purchaser or an accredited investor. You can invest in sovereign capital. They have a, a fund on the New York Stock Exchange that's called the Omega Fund. And they are, um, it's an it's 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 traded every day, it's an ETF that's traded daily. And you are able to um, you're 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 able to invest in them, and they are investing in companies that have Christians as leaders that are driving good in in the marketplace, right? So first off, how they care for their employees. Most of the companies have um, chaplaincy. A lot of them have things that they're giving back to their employees through um, benevolence plans and and crisis management stuff and things like that. But they're also seeking to make a kingdom impact in the, in, in the world around them. So that's a very easy kind of form of impact investing. There are also organizations, and that's a that's an equity driven um, thing. They're they're looking at buying businesses, investing in businesses, right? So kind of private equity kind of type of mentality. A lot of those. Then there's organizations like Talaton. 
Um, and Talatin is, um, their name comes from the parable of the talents. And Talatin is an organization that I've, I've just come to love. Um, and they are focused on small to medium enterprises in the developing world, primarily East Africa. And they are a debt targeted investment. And so the returns that they're seeking is, is kind of a, like an 8% return. And they are targeting businesses that their primary impact driver is job creation. And so if we want to move people out of homelessness, if we want to move people out of poverty, the, the best place for that is small, small to medium enterprises. Um, hands down, that is the absolute best driver of economies period. Government isn't going to do it. Charity is not going to do it, right? Like the, the, the amount of money that's been given to Africa in charitable dollars that are, that are, that are as donations that have not moved the needle one iota. It's, it's appalling. It's, but business, business can be truly life transformative to an individual and family. So they focus on businesses that have um, uh, a real target and focus of creating jobs and also um, uh, a kingdom impact along the side of it. And so I was actually just in Africa and got to see some great work that they're doing. Um, and, and we can riff on a whole nother episode of some of the cool things that I got to see. Um, and these are things that that could be applied in every single business. Uh, if you're a business owner or a business leader, you could apply these things to your businesses here today. And so that's another kind of fund where it's where it's um, you're investing in them. They're 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 investing in multiple companies and getting returns and things like that. Then there's also direct investments that can be done. And um, one thing that's really really neat about direct investments um, with impact investing is some of the accredited investor rules do not apply. And so um, because the charity is actually the one who's making the investments. And we are viewed as that incredible investor. And so you actually have access to make investments, direct investments in businesses and organizations and things like that, um, that where you might not normally, okay? And so a couple of examples for that is, is we had um, uh, we had a set of givers, a medical doctor uh, down in uh, the Grand Junction area. And he and his wife were getting ready to sell their practice. He actually sold their practice and somebody connected him to us. and. Um, he was a little too late to gift his business before he sold. Um, and we can talk about that later. Um, but we ended up uh, saying, hey, what else has God entrusted you to steward? And they're like, well, we also own the, our commercial real estate. And I'm like, hey, that's a beautiful charitable gift. And so they ended up gifting their, their commercial real estate to NCF. And by that, they got uh, like a, this triple tax benefit, which is just absolutely beautiful. We, they sold that property and the proceeds flowed into their giving fund. Um, it was about a million dollars. And so now they've got the million dollars sitting in their charitable checking account. And they're like, hey, how are we, we're going to give some to our local church? And there's some things like that. But they saw a real need in their community. Um, they uh, uh, they had like two daughters and they were, in, they were dancers, um, uh, not in the bad form guys. Um, uh, like, you know, and, but, but what they realized is, is there's no Christian dance studios available in Grand Junction at all. Like every one of them is, you know, it's, it's objectifying it's just terrible, you know? And so they're really burdened by that. And so, um, and they also saw that there was multiple churches that did not have, um, a location. They didn't have a church building to be able to meet in, and they needed that. And there was a, a lack of event space. And so what they did is they're like, Hey, they were talking to me about this problem. And I'm like, well, you know, you guys can make a charitable investment into a property and purchase that to do those things. And so they're, they're, you know, light bulbs just went off. And so what they ended up doing was uh, creating an LLC and that LLC ended up purchasing the um, the shutdown Indian motorcycle dealership down in Grand Junction, and they turned it into um, they turned it into this beautiful redemptive property. So there's a Christian dance studio that now exists there. There is uh, two different churches meet there over the weekends, and they also have an event center. Now all of those things, right? All those four different. Entities, right? Two churches, event center. There's a there's a business that's running that event center, and then the Christian dance studio. Those are all income producing, and so what they were able to do is use their charitable dollars through the Impact Foundation. They made a grant to the Impact Foundation. And the Impact Foundation made an investment of almost a million dollars into their LLC, which allowed them to purchase that building, right? Now that is a revenue generating thing, right? So they're, those people paying rent, that's going back into the LLC that they're then paying off that debt. 
they were able to set up a structure um, and, and you can do this. You can make it market rate returns. You can make it below market. You can make it above. You can make it private equity returns. They did a below market rate, right? Because they're like, hey, we want to, we do want to earn um, interest in this. We want to earn income off of this investment. It's income generating so we can do that, but we don't want to just go to the bank and, and just you know run this at nine and a half percent. And so I think they did like a four and a half or a five percent loan note. They also knew it was going to take more time. And so they did a delay in their payments initially. And so now their charitable dollars have been used to create this space that's making a huge impact in their community, right? And then the returns, right? The interest that's earned on this investment, that goes back into their donor advised fund tax-free or in a tax-preferred manner um, it, based off a of structure. I can't remember which one it was for them. But now those charitable dollars have grown through this investment. They can now reinvest that in another deal or they're able to grant those dollars out to nonprofits. And so that's a, that's a really neat example. I could give you a lot more, but I, I realize I'm also talking a lot. Man, that's, that's crazy. So my question, and, and before you got into that, as you were talking, my question is, and it's even, I think, more, uh, at least in my mind, more pressing now is, you know, when you do the impact giving, who, so who is, who's designated, like, am I designate? am I telling you, Eric, Hey, I want, I am very interested in this thing, impact giving. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what I want to do. And then Eric with NCF creates a strategy and says, okay, these are the things we can do. And, and cause you guys are super, like what you just described is, is extremely complicated, but it's, but it's, it's fascinating. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I told you, I was going to ask you about how some of these strategies, like, like the mm -hmm. idea of going beyond just like putting money in your, you know, the church, uh, the church, uh, whatever Offering. basket that they pass around. Right. Yeah. Uh, there, there are things that you can do that are absolutely ninja level, mm. uh, investments that even make a bigger or greater impact or has, a, have the potential to do things differently. So, so who designates that impact giving, or do I have to find like those funds that you were talking about and I give to yeah. them and then they designate, how does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. So giving into a donor advised fund, that's where you get your charitable benefit, right? So they gave their, the example that I just gave you, they gave their real estate into NCF, into a donor advised fund. Um, that property was sold and the liquidity, the cash then went into their giving fund. Okay. Um, the technical term is a donor advised fund. So and, the and this donor, is like Stu and I have, like I have the Gutierrez family fund. He has the yep. Grazer family fund. We have the storehouse Mm -hmm. uh, fund. That's what you're talking about. That first. That's one. exactly what I'm talking about. Right. So you can gift cash. You can give, um, assets, um, as simple as stocks. You can give real estate, you can give business, you can give intellectual property rights, water and gas rights, all these things, all these assets can actually be given into those funds. And then the liquidity that happens, be it through distributions, um, if it's a long-term hold that NCF does, right? That's flowing into that actual giving fund that you have, okay? And then from there, you are an advisor on it. You no longer own that money. You have no longer have any personal benefit you can get out of that those those dollars. Okay, that's how you got your charitable deduction. But you can advise NCF how to use those funds, and so you can do that simply by saying, "Hey, I want you to send a grant to my church. I want you to send a grant to Young Life. I want you to send a grant to these." NCF has the right as do all other donor advised fund platforms, we have the right to say no to deny a grant. And we have to have that right for this to, 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 to work with the IRS, okay? And so NCF, we, um, uh, I told you about our mission vision and our values at the, at the, at the beginning, right? We long to see um, people know and love Christ. And so we will allow you to grant to any 501c3 organization or, um, uh, or recognized charity. Those are IRS, you know, uh, designated type of groups, as long as they're not antithetical to an orthodox view of Christianity. If it's innocuous, no problem. So if you want to give to the American Heart Association, that's not a, that's not a Christian organization. You can still give to that, right? But NCF is going to deny a grant that is to an organization that is antithetical to that. Okay. So we have a right, but we don't tell you where to give. We're not saying, Hey, Stu, uh, Hey, David, you need to give this money to these organizations, right? Sometimes a community foundation, that's what you're doing. You're putting the money in 
And then the community is deciding, this is where we're going to send this money. Okay. So you have the right to tell us. So you tell us, hey, I want to make an impact investment. And so we then work with a partner, the Impact Foundation, and, and there's an approval process. Again, we want to make sure that this, this impact is not um, antithetical to an orthodox view of Christianity. As long as that's not the case, you're able to make that investment. You can literally do that with the cash that's sitting in your fund today too, right? So you can make these bigger, different impact investments, or you could say, hey, I want, I want these funds to be invested. NCF has five faith-driven investment pool options that you literally could say, hey, I just want my balance to be making a kingdom impact while I'm waiting for it to be deployed. You're telling NCF where to do that. Now, if you say, hey, I got these ideas. I've heard you talk, Eric, and I got these different ideas. I see these problems in my community. I see these problems in the world, and I'm trying to figure out, hey, how do we go solve this problem? I don't know who's doing that work, right? That's where we come alongside and begin like, hey, I can introduce you to these three organizations and let you talk about it. Or we can start formalizing. Like I, I came alongside this family that, that saw this need down in Grand Junction, and we can then kind of help navigate through that process. So don't know if that's helpful. Yeah, that's awesome. And then just out of curiosity, the LLC they started, did they did they have to go through the process of becoming uh, 501c2? Mm-mm. to? Nope. No, no, nope. cool. no, they're just a, they're a, they're a run of the mill LLC formed as a partnership, which is the best type of entity, especially for tax purposes, hands down. Um, and so it creates the, the, the most kind of preferred opportunities because in the future, they literally can then gift that LLC to NCF as well. Right. So once you pay off that debt, you know, we, it's not good to give an, an asset that is debt laden or significantly debt laden. But when that comes down, right, they still are going to own that property. Well, they literally down the road can gift that LLC that that's holding that old um, Indian motorcycle dealership to NCF. That could be, and and we hold it and then receive that income in a tax free manner. Okay, or they could say, hey, I now want. I think it's time to sell that property, and um, and then that liquidity also comes back into their giving fund, so they can literally. You know, they they gifted their their commercial real estate, which was their medical practice, where their built where their medical practice was. Now they could they use that money to invest in this asset, right? They can then get that asset, and and just it's just a beautiful thing. Hey, when when you introduced yourself, you said that you you had been a business owner, a real estate investor, and you made all the mistakes in the world uh, from your from the giving aspect of it. Can you explain that? Like, why why did you make mistakes giving? It yeah, doesn't seem right. right. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the the mistakes are um, some missed opportunities to be even more efficient and be more generous specifically when I say it that mm-hmm. way. Um, and so, you know, N- Jackie, my wife and I were introduced to NCF when we first got married. Um, I remember we started the, the, the gift registry process and we went to dinner and we went out to Crate and Barrel and we got the little scanner and we were walking around shooting all the barcodes of all the stuff that we want. And I I remember walking in excited. I really remember walking out feeling absolutely demoralized. I'm like, we don't need this stuff. And 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 I'm granted, we got married at a little different stage of our lives. Um, I was 10 years older than I am. Um, we were already established. She had a townhouse and had a bunch, you know, like I I I'd been on my own for 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 a while. And so I get some kids coming out of college that are just getting married and they don't have a single thing, right? Like there's some things that can be a real help. But we really didn't need this stuff. Some of these things were like an elevation of the quality of what we had. And and I'm just like, we just don't need this stuff. And so I'm like, let's just delete that gift registry. And so we did. She she said, okay. Well, the next day she went to Macy's and picked out a bunch of the stuff. And she's, she got excited. She's like, hey, come. But if there's anything you don't like, we can just get rid of it. And we got rid of almost everything except the set of silverware and plates. And we use the silverware like every single day. And so like we kept that. And I was just mentioning a buddy of mine and he worked at NCF. He goes, Eric, why don't you open up a giving fund at NCF? You can get a donate here button and you can share that with people and they can give to that. And by God's grace, that's what people did. And so um, so we that's when we opened our donor advised fund with NCF. That was 14 years ago. And we started just doing kind of checkbook giving. So instead of giving to our church and writing checks to this nonprofit and this nonprofit, all of our money went in from our personal checking account into our NCF fund. And then from there, we distributed it out to those organizations. 
This simplified our giving. So instead of tracking down charitable receipts from all these entities, we just had one charitable receipt. And, and that was great. It also gave us the ability to hit, um, there were times that we wanted to give anonymously. And so I click a button and we'd send that grant anonymously. And so we were just kind of doing just data, you know, just checkbook giving, which is not efficient giving, right? And so um, at this time I was running a, um, my family had a insurance agency and I became kind of owner of that. And we were, we were growing our ownership in that, in that, um, in that insurance business. And I took that business to a sale in 2015 and, um, we sold the business and, um, had a, had a couple of year earn out. And once I made my kind of my initial, um, I got my check, uh, for the initial, um, sale proceeds, I took, we took a percentage and we put it into our giving fund. Um, and um, that was a huge miss. We did the same thing with our commercial real estate. We, so we also owned the building that we were in and we sold that. And I was thinking like, hey, we bought this thing. And this is my ignorance. You guys are some real estate experts. And I was not at the time at all. And I, I still don't claim to be an expert. You guys still know way more than I do. I've grown a lot in this. But, you know, like um, I, I didn't know about this thing called depreciation recapture. Right. So I've been depreciating this asset over time. And uh, which is great. That's a, that's a great tax benefit. But when you sell that, right, the IRS wants to recapture that depreciation. And so the, uh, one way that a lot of us try to get around that, if you will, is we do 1031 exchanges, right? Um, and we're, punt, we're punting that down the road. Well, I'm just thinking, hey, we bought it at this. This is how much debt we had on it. This is what we're selling it for. This is going to be awesome. And they don't, literally like all the benefit, like literally went to the IRS. And so- what I didn't know is prior to the sale of my business, I could have given part of my interest to NCF and got a charitable tax donation at the time of that gift. And then when I sold that business, NCF is a silent partner in the transaction. And NCF as a charity would not, based off of our tax structure, they would not have received... Um, uh, they would have had to pay tax. Um, NCF does pay some tax on certain types of entities, but the effective tax rate for NCF is 60% lower than what my, my personal tax rate would be. And so that difference, instead of going to the IRS, would have gone into my charitable checking account, my giving fund, where I could give those funds away. Real estate is an even better asset where NCF doesn't pay any tax on real estate. And so we could have gifted a portion of our ownership or all of our ownership in that building to NCF, that property then sell, and the proceeds flow in. We not only don't pay any tax on real estate, we also don't, aren't subject to depreciation recapture. And so as an individual, I could have gifted that asset and, I, and by gifting it into NCF or a donor advised fund, I get the benefit of fair market value as a personal deduction. If I can't use all that deduction up in one year, I could carry that deduction over for the next five years. Now, some people on here might say, oh, I heard a friend that did that and they gave it into like a foundation, a private foundation. Um, it is not efficient to give real estate into a private foundation. So giving that asset into a private foundation, you'd only get the benefit of original basis. And so, um, so that's a mistake I made. I should have gifted those assets to NCF before a sale, which would have lowered my charitable or my taxable um, bill. And so I could give more dollars away. Um, so that was a big miss, you know, something that I's, I've come to learn um, and then share now. I've heard this from maybe one of our attorneys is, is friends don't let friends give cash when there are other assets available, right? Like, because giving cash is the least efficient way to be charitable. So let me, so, uh, let me start here. Instead of, let's say it was just, we have a single family rental house, right? Mm -hmm. And we decide we have a bunch of equity in it. We decide that we want to sell it. Instead of just selling the rental property, taking the profit, and then from that profit, giving some to our donor advice fund instead mm -hmm. prior to selling it give an interest ownership mm -hmm. to NCF of that asset yep and then sell it 
Yeah. Now the equity portion of that interest, let's say it's 10%, 20%, whatever it is, that goes into the donor advice fund and it's not going to us personally. So we don't get taxed on that portion of it. So yeah. that's a true statement. And our portion is tax-free, right? We right. pay no tax whatsoever. You've now avoided that in a legal manner. Um, so you don't have to pay taxes on it. And um, and then also the amount that you're personally receiving is less, right? Mm, and so right. like that, that, that helps over there. And one thing that's really been fascinating to me that I've learned along the way is, is the tax law is not linear. It's actually, um, it's kind of like a hockey stick. And so um, can I share a, another story? I love stories. So yeah, um, but before you, before you kick that off, I want to make okay. sure I highlight one thing too. And it's not that the money you get back is less. You've already, for most of us, if we're, we're giving, we've already determined that we're going to give a portion of the proceeds away anyway. So effectively yeah. you're, you are getting exactly what you potentially, you, you, you do it beforehand. So you're giving exactly what you were going to give anywhere, or get what you were going to get anyways. It's just a significantly more efficient way to do it. Right. Um, Yes, but I actually think um, let me let me share this story real quick because I think this will help you. Because um, actually, what you find out is is the more generous you are, the more you're actually able to to take home. It's fascinating. So I had a guy who kind of heard that, like, learn from my mistakes, and so he called me up. This guy, um, I had him on my podcast not too long ago. Um, his name is Pete, and Pete um, and his wife Linda they owned a commercial cleaning company um, up in Fort Collins. And uh, they've been stewards of it. And, um, and, and so um, they were getting raised out. Now, now timing is of the essence of these things. You can't get your property, that single family home under contract and then call up Eric and say, hey, Eric, I got under contract. I want to do that thing. Too late. Uh, you have to do this before you're and you're ever under any binding letter of intent. And so Pete had heard that. So Pete called me up, said, "Hey, Eric, we're thinking about selling our business, and you told us to call." I said, "Great, well, Pete. What do you what do you think? What do, what do you think your business is worth? What do you think about giving?" And he said, "Our plan is to give a tithe, so we're thinking about ten percent um, of the value of the business." And I said, "What do you think your business is worth?" He says, "I think my business is worth between two and a half and three million dollars." Awesome. And so I ran the quick numbers for him. And um, by gifting 10% of his business to NCF prior to a sale, um, he was going to be able to walk away with um, about, uh, he was going to be able to give about $168,000. Sorry, it's been a while since I thought about Pete. I have to think about the numbers real quick. So he was going to be able to give, if he didn't talk to NCF, and he sold and he gave 10% after he paid taxes, he was going to be able to give about $168,000 away. By giving 10% of his business to NCF prior to the sale, he's now going to give away $250,000. And get this, his take home is more than it would have been had he not done a gift through NCF, okay? Because it's lowering that tax basis. And so he's giving away more and taking away, taking home more. Okay, so it's like this is a double win. This is amazing. But then I explained to Pete, I said, Pete, um, the tax law is not linear. It's like a hockey stick. The more generous you are, actually, the more generous our tax code is. And um, and so I showed him like a 25 and a 30% gift. And then I showed him a 50% gift. And when I showed Pete um, a 50% gift, um, he started crying. Because at a 50% gift of his business, so valued it. We did the conservative numbers, two and a half million dollars. He was going to be able to give away $1.375 million. And the take home was going to be about $175,000 less than if he did a transaction, who didn't do a transaction with NCF at all. So if he just did that 10% gift after the sale, right, he was going to take home 175 less, which I realize is a number, but, but in the grand scheme of things, like it's like, well, I can give away 1.375 million more. That, that's also a number. <laughs> that's also a number. That's also. So number. he went home and he and his wife, I said, Hey guys, pray about it. I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to give you education of what's available. And he and his wife went home and prayed about it. And they said, Hey, let's take a, let's take a week and let's pray about this to get, you know, separate and together. And, and Pete says, all right, I wanted to, uh, uh, we, we got back together around the kitchen table and I asked Linda, like, what's the number? He goes, I want to ask her cause she's more generous than I am. And, uh, and she goes, when I told him 50%, he thought I was ludicrous though, too. He's just like, who is this guy, right? Holy Spirit told him, give 50%, both to her and to him. And so they gave 50% of their business to NCF prior to the sale. Now, here's the neat thing. business. So we, we did that, completed. Business got on the market, got under contract, business sold. 
business sold for $3 million. So $1.5 million went into their giving fund. And guess what? Their walk away was the same, if not a little bit more than the original situation if he had not done a gift through NCF and they've been a giveaway. Um, and so, um, so timing is important, but the impact is massively important of what you can do. That's fascinating, man. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, why didn't we have this conversation? Like, I don't know, five, six years ago, <laughs> Stu, because all, all the, these houses that we sold and, and it j- it's just, it's fascinating to me. Um, to your point, and I think a lot of us, you know, we we are biblical givers. You know, it's the condition of our heart that God's looking at, right? It's it's this this idea of I'm giving, I'm tithing, I'm being I'm being faithful, I'm honoring God, or or whatever it is. It, 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 you know, if, if that's not your your reason for giving, you just want to be mm-hmm. generous for whatever yeah. your reasons are. And and I find it fascinating that there's there is a very compelling, real. Uh, business aspect to giving as well, efficiency of giving as well that you can just maximize. And it's it's just an absolutely fascinating conversation, which is why we really wanted to have you on to, to talk about some of the things. Because I think a lot of us feel, and not that I feel bad about our, our past giving, but, yeah. but even like the, the house I sold in Maryland, I'm like, man, there's a way that I, I could have done that very, very mm-hmm. differently. I just didn't know. And that's one of the yeah. things I love about the podcast is, is we have these opportunities to talk about things that ideas to expose others and ourselves to, I just didn't know. Right. And if I did know, it, it would look very different. Cause I, you know, we gave, I mean, from the house of Maryland, we, we, we gave what we, uh, you know, we gave our tithe from that. And, but I'm thinking now I'm like, man, we probably could have quadrupled that number of giving and it just would have, it, it, it's such a fascinating conversation. So we have to talk uh, offline. I have a couple of investment yeah. properties that I'm actually going to sell um, here shortly. And so I need to get some work with, yeah. with you done, but but really the point of all that is, is we should be constantly seeking to better ourselves and grow and, and make connections with people that if you're truly passionate about it, you'll take the extra time. Like if you're, if you're a truly passionate giver, yeah. then you should talk to some giver ninjas, right? You should mm-hmm. talk to people like you, Eric, like, how can I do this better? Mm-hmm. How can I do this more effectively, more efficiently? Right. And I think it's a fascinating conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it encourages my soul, you know, um, there's, um, I don't know if you guys know them, uh, John and Ashley Marsh They're um, um, they run a, uh, big real estate investors and developers. They've redeveloped the town of Opalaka, Alabama, um, be, be a fantastic, um, guest to, to the connect man, um, podcast actually. Um, and they have a crazy redemption story. And so he runs a podcast called Redemptification. And it's talking about like redeeming these things, right? And and something that they said in this meet in this video in the Seattle Pacific Faith and Co. videos. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of those. They 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 did one and they said in, in this video, God never wastes time. He's always weaving where you are to where you're going. And 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 I have great confidence in that. Yes, I, I I've already said here, like, hey, I made some mistakes, but I don't think God is is, is wasting that, those mistakes, right? Like through those, we should grow. And now that you have heard and you have learned, right? God's also giving you a platform to now share this with others. That way they don't make the same mistakes that you've made. And hopefully in the long term, way more is being done. You know, one of the NCF giver who's, and we, and we, we're concerned about privacy and I only share stories of people that say that, that, that we can, but one of the givers at NCF is just an extraordinary man um, and family, it's not just him, it's his, it's his entire family, but his name is um, Alan Barnhart. And he runs this organization called Barnhart Crane and Rigging. It's the largest crane and rigging company in the in the country. They move really big things. And um, several years ago, um, back in, uh, I think it was about 2007, he'd been, he'd been trying to figure out how to, he never viewed his business as his business. He just viewed it as as, as, as he was a steward, it was God's business, but the IRS would not see it that way, right? If something happened, there was a huge estate tax issue that was going to happen. And so he started going down this journey of wanting to give away his business and all of his advisors, his financial advisors, his very good accountants, like, you can't do that. And he's like, nah, there's got to be a way. And eventually somebody said, hey, you got to talk to the folks at NCF. And literally in 30 minutes, we told him how he could give away his business. And in 07, he gave away um, 99% of Barnhart Crane and Rigging to NCF. And he continues to to run it. Uh, There was no desire to sale. And so he's still faithfully stewarding and running that business. 
And eventually he kept pushing NCF, hey, how do I give that last 1%? And we figured out how to let him give that last 1%. And so we own 100% of Barnhart Crane Rigging. And through that, and by God's grace, like um, last year, um, they they take 50% of the profits and they reinvest it back into the business every year. And the other 50%, they then give as an owner distri- distribution that goes into their giving fund. Last year, that was almost $40 million. Um, and um, they've been able to give away hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, this is the thing. We talked about the um, um, the stewardship of not just your finances, but even of our whole lives to, to Alan and about the stewardship of your story. Now, he's a guy that really didn't want to share very much about the details of those things. But over time, he really realized that that was maybe a calling that God was giving him. And so he started sharing about gifting away his business. And over a very short period of time, once he started sharing that, The number of other people that have come to NCF and says, hey, I want to do what that guy Alan did. I want to do that too. The number is exponentially higher that's been given away because of his faithful stewardship of his story. And that's what I think you guys have an opportunity for, right? You now learn this, right? And those that are listening to this right now, you've now heard this. And now you have an opportunity to be faithful stewards of what you've heard and what you learn and put that into action and share it with others. So good, man. Love it. Well, Well, um, you know, and and before we sign off that what's fascinating to me is even when we look at our network and guys doing big deals, right. And just the exposure to the idea of, of this conversation, I, I, I'm just, it's, it's fascinating what potentially could happen. And all the guys that I'm thinking of are all faith guys, right. They're all, they're all uh, Jesus lovers. And, and, and I just think there's an element of, man, I just didn't know. And that's a fascinating story. I, I saw a video years ago, but I mean, I even, you know, just his, it's, it, the, the numbers are just, are baffling. They're, mm-hmm. they're baffling. And, mm-hmm. and it's, it's such a story of, uh, of grace and beauty. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So that, that's one great. thing I love about Alan is he goes, you know, God's not impressed with the zeros. Um, he says, man is right. Like, but, but God isn't impressed, right? Like he, he wants our whole heart. He wants our whole life. And, um, and, and the humility of Alan is extraordinary. Um, I've had the joy of having him in my house and he, he slept in my basement cause he, he'd rather sleep in my basement than go and have us put him up at a holiday inn. even, you know, like I just love his heart and, and you're right. Um, God's not impressed by the zeros, but I think he is, but he desires faithfulness. So, so good, man. Well, this has been a, a really fun conversation. I know we could go longer, but uh, we want to honor your time. Um, how do, how do uh, guys and gals that have listened to this conversation get in touch with you and, and, and learn more about NCF? Yeah. So NCF, we've got um, over 30 offices. We're actually in over 120 communities across the country. And so, you know, depending on where you are and where you're listening, feel free to go to ncfgiving.com and, and look for a local team. And those local teams, you know, it, they might, it's going to show you like the 30 cities, but there, there's their impacts in, in greater areas than that. And so that's a great way to get connected to anybody at NCF. Um, personally, um, I'm here in, in the Denver area and we, we run the Rocky mountain region. So Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Boise, Idaho, and Colorado kind of in our area that we work and serve. And so feel free to reach out, um, through NCF giving. Um, I also, um, host, uh, a podcast or co-host a podcast called the generosity now podcast. And so if this is getting your, you know, your, your blood boiling a little bit in a good way, and you're a little excited, you can definitely learn some more over there. Um, but don't stop listening uh, to the kinetic man podcast, right? That's just, if you have bandwidth to add another one in. So that's another easy way to get a hold of us. And, and, I, and I'll put a plug for that. It's a, it's a fantastic uh, podcast that, uh, that you run, Eric. And there's just so many amazing stories of, of generosity and just gets your ideas flowing of, of what, what we can do to go serve a bigger higher purpose. So, um, thank you, man. This was, this was fun. Can't wait to, uh, hug it out in person again. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm bummed. I'm missing the next fly fishing adventure. Uh, I'll be, I'll be sweating my face off in Texas while you guys but with fishing. your family. So with my family, That's you right. know, make the right priorities. That's right. So That's there'll right. be plenty of more time for us to hopefully get you, get a fish on that line of yours. Well, it's hard to, it's hard to get a fish. If your entire spool is in the river, <laughs> <laughs> it makes it. Okay. Sign it off. Uh, good to talk guys. <laughs> You know, you know what we could do, Stu? We What's could that? actually put a bunch of hooks 
all, all along your line. And then yeah. as you drop it, just when you're it, pulling it in, it can just be a bunch of like flies that are like in the it. water at all times. It's like, your it's like trolling. Go up. It's like, it's, it's like, it's like it would like just be right? like trolling. Yeah. 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 Trolling. It, it, it'd be those, uh, whatever you call those long lines that they put in the ocean. Tag uh, lines or something like that. Or something. It's illegal, but I mean, yeah. but it's, it's, a new it's only illegal if you, if you do it on purpose, Stu. Right. If you do it on purpose, it's illegal. If you do it on accident, then you might be good. I don't know. Uh, hey, the best way good. to catch, to catch fish, right. Is you have to have your fly in the water. You just got to have 100%. a fly in the water. So, and, and Stu takes that. He took that advice extremely. See, I'm but, talking all this trash. I'm going to go to the river and I'm going to lose my You're going to get like, so okay, skunked. You're yeah, going to get right. so this skunked. Is, Watch out. What it is. Hey, Eric, thank you so much, man. It, it's been a, just an absolute pleasure getting to know you. I think, uh, you know, it was one of the things. Love Dave, love the office in Orlando. I, I've never been there, but um, but I love Dave. Mm -hmm. And great guy. And I will say that uh I truly felt it. There, there, there are certain things that you do and connections you make and decisions you um that you follow through with that that you truly feel God's blessing in it, right? Mm -hmm. And when we switched our stuff to the office here, it just felt that was something recently that I felt like really, really good about. And mm -hmm. and and then you took us to some private, a mile of private fly fishing water, which really <laughs> Uh, just validated the entire decision, but, but, but all joking aside, I would encourage people to plug in to these offices locally, right? Yes. If Eric, if, if Eric is the name that pops in your head, I'm sure he will, you know, you reach out to him and he'll put you in the right direction, but, but being able to plug into your local community into something you're passionate about is, is a beautiful thing. And then, and then to enhance, um, the things that are truly important to you, man, you guys enable that. And it's just a blessing mm -hmm. from God, man. So, so thank yeah. so thankful for you. So thankful for a relationship. Uh, thankful that you and I are going to probably be best fishing friends and all that kind of stuff and snowboarding you know, and snowboarding and galore. All that, all that yeah. Love it. <laughs> we'll Love send it. Stu some pictures and, and whatnot. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, but Hey man, really appreciate you and uh, just the blessing that you've been in our lives already. So thank you for that. I praise God. Grateful for you guys. You too, man. Thanks. See ya. All right, boys. See ya. Hey, for those of you uh, who've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know that Dave and myself uh, transitioned out of a 20-year career in the, in the military, in the Navy. And there were some really big struggles in that. And I'd say that for anybody that's in a transition of changing an identity can have a really, really hard time finding a new identity and going through the struggles of figuring out what's next. We talk a lot about purpose. We talk a lot about tribe and community. And we talk a lot about mission. And those aspects of a transition are really hard to figure out. So you need a community. You need a tribe. You need to have someone in your life that's going to hold you accountable and help you grow into this new identity. That's what we do in The Kinetic Man. We have a lot of military veterans uh, in, our, in our space that uh, we talk through on a daily and monthly basis of, of how to figure out what's next, how to figure out how to continue to live with purpose, live with mission, and be incredible husbands, incredible fathers, incredible leaders in the community, and incredible businessmen. We have a ton of entrepreneurs. Uh, we have guys doing deals together, investing with each other, and growing with each other to be uh, the best men that they can possibly be so they can show up every single day uh, for their families and for their businesses. If that's something that sounds interesting, come join us. You can go to thekineticman.com backslash sign up thekineticman.com backslash sign up and come grow with us. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Connect Man podcast. If you are growth minded, community focused, and willing to take uncommon action to redefine success and live an abundant life, visit our website at www.thekineticman.com to see all the ways we can connect. And on our website, you can find more information on everything we're doing, like joining our meetup page to get the details on our webinars and our local Thursday gatherings here in Colorado. From our site, you can also find more information on and sign up for the next Kinetic Man Retreat and the next house of our mastermind group. Finally, we always appreciate your love and support. Please share this episode and go rate us on your favorite podcast player of choice. Thank you again. Now go take uncommon action.